the wait is finally over. We have now properly seen Starfield. We got about 13 minutes of gameplay of the game and we have a ton of major features revealed, which is a big deal. We've known this game is coming for years, but we only just now actually know what it's all about, which does create a very interesting situation where you can actually go back and look at a plethora of Starfield leaks to come out over the past five, six years and see which of these got a shocking amount of information correct before that was publicly known or even really publicly predicted. With one of these leaks in particular actually looking very promising, and trust me, this is a crazy saga going all the way from 2018 to 2021. And if this ends up being true, it'll easily be one of the craziest leaks around a Bethesda game. Although one of the hard parts when talking about Starfield is we technically have no idea when this game is coming out. It could be about another full year before you get to explore this galaxy, but you can actually have a galaxy in your home right now thanks to today's video sponsor with Galaxy Lamps. The Galaxy Projector can transform your bedroom, outdoor hangout, or even your entire apartment like it does for me. And this thing isn't just powerful, but also like incredibly convenient to use. It is full on app integration, so you can pick whatever color you want and make things insanely bright or have more of a mood lighting depending on your current feel. And set up timers and schedules so you wake up feeling like you're in outer space. And if you really want to feel futuristic, you can set up the Galaxy Projector with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant, but it can also be used on its own without an app and even has this really handy three stand system for getting that angle just right. And since you are watching this video, you are in luck because viewers of this video can get 15% off their Galaxy Projector with code JUICEHEAD, or alternatively use my link in the video description. Thanks again to Galaxy Lamps for sponsoring this video. But looking back at Starfield leaks, we first have to roll the clock back all the way to 2018, shortly after the release of Fallout 7. A post is made in 4chan comparing Starfield to The Outer Worlds, just a typical 2018 thing, and one apparent Bethesda Game Studio developer actually comments on this post, where it does claim that Starfield in its current form is very buggy and barely a game. Starfield will likely release in two to three years or further. And this is what kicks it off, what kicks off what I think is actually a very legitimate leak of Starfield. This person goes on to claim to be a programmer under Todd Howard at the Maryland studio in Bethesda Game Studios, but he's been working there since about a year before Fallout 4 came out. And to really just establish the context at this point, it's a couple of months after the release of Fallout 76, people hate Bethesda because, you know, Fallout 76, and all we actually have around Starfield is that trademark and the initial teaser trailer we got earlier in 2018, so we know basically nothing about the game other than Bethesda Game Studios is making the game and it's set in space. This supposed employee goes on to describe how they are trying to implement actual ship flying tech with Starfield, and specifically, gameplay for the flight will be my top prioritized thing and, well, getting it to work to be bug free. And when it comes to shipbuilding, they are planning to expand the building a bit more so an overview system will be used to make ships. Starfield overall is described as an organic growth game with Morrowind's RPG systems coming back in a deeper form, but more organic to Skyrim leveling by action. I'll be hoping to expand on this through a spaceship that will grow with you, not only in tech, but also crew. As for the theme, we are trying to hit the perfect blend of Star Trek and Prey with modern sci-fi. Describe how Starfield thus far feels very different compared to Elder Scrolls and Fallout, and almost like it's Mass Effect and Doom had a baby, but Morrowind was the adoptive father, id is helping out to improve the shooting quite a bit on Starfield, and further how more complex animations are being implemented with a new physics system and notably ladders have been implemented into the game, and the FOV is freely changeable, finally. And if you watch the Starfield reveal we got about a week ago now, this should really stand out, because there was a shocking amount of things this leak from late 2018 when everyone hated Bethesda actually got right. This is very early into Starfield's development, and we hear about a developer working on ship flight. Todd Howard just confirmed that when it came to Starfield, ship flight was actually one of the first things the studio worked on. They describe a top-down shipbuilding view, which is something that of course just got revealed. And honestly, if you told me like six months ago Starfield would have that, I'd be a little bit wary. Yet this post from three and a half years ago seems to get this particular detail correct and even the ladder thing. Ladders are a thing in Starfield. We saw that in the 2021 trailer. And just as this leak does describe, this is not actually fully implemented 
animated ladders, but rather an advancement in the animation system. It's just an animation that plays. And I feel like the context around this all makes it a lot more interesting. Actually predicting space flight would be a thing in Starfield a couple of months after the disaster of Fallout 76 came out. Immediately after Fallout 76, not many people were thinking Bethesda could pull off space flight when they could barely pull off multiplayer. Two of the things that this leaker says in this post that are likely inaccurate or just not confirmed are an augmentation system and alternate start. There is an augmentation system, less cyberpunk-like and more biotech, and we wanted to have a more visual effect on the players. Todd was also really inspired by Chris Roberts' The Death of a Spaceman story with Star Citizen and set the team on more complex character designs and the possibility of them getting scared and stuff from battles. Although I think this is meant to say scarred. Augmentations are not confirmed for Starfield. We don't really know if anything like that will make it into the game, but in one piece of concept art, there is a person with a bionic arm. And he also does report how apparently a system for alternate start based on race and class is being implemented. This seems to be explicitly disconfirmed based on the recent gameplay. We see a singular start, and you could actually only be a human based off what we've seen thus far. But perhaps three and a half years ago when this was posted, things were different. They were actually having different plans for the game. And the crazy part about this all is this is really just the beginning. As I mentioned earlier in this video, this is a leak that spans multiple years. We get that original post at the end of 2018, but he returns in early 2019 with a post of his own. This post talks about Fallout 76 internal issues and topics like that, but he goes on to say that Starfield will be the biggest Bethesda Game Studios game ever made, and very much so like a classic Bethesda game compared to Fallout 76. But beyond that, the post really focuses on Fallout 76 talk. I'll have a link to it down below if you are interested. But then from there, several years go by and we hear absolutely nothing until just before E3 2021. As on June 3rd, 2021, someone makes a post claiming to have played Starfield. They report a bunch of things about their experience playing the game and our familiar leaker from 2018 and 2019 comes back after a long hiatus to claim this other leaker, the person to originally make the post, is making it all up. But how he is the real deal and the person that made those previous comments. And we get a ton of additional information from this 2021 post in particular. And to be clear, at this point, we still don't know much. It is before the E3 trailer at 2021's E3. They describe how Starfield will feature gameplay of exploring the universe, this being a full year before this was officially confirmed, and how you can travel to debris fields surrounding Earth due to our trash gathering up there, saying that Starfield will have a core central universe with a long story that connects to several planets you will visit, but it's open-ended. You go to a ton of different systems and land on every planet that has physical land. There's a core plot point though that will drive the player from planet to planet to explore, which is kind of largely what we just saw during the gameplay reveal. You could go everywhere to all thousand planets in this game, but it seems like there are several handcrafted planets that you're meant to go to across the story. They describe how Starfield will have a romance system very similar to Fallout 4 and Skyrim's, and that RPG elements are at oblivion levels in Skyrim. They leaned more into freedom like gun customization and ship customization, plus more crew settings to role play into what type of player you are, but as for pure skills, they are more akin to Skyrim's do to learn, which you of course have seen from that gameplay reveal with the challenges you can do to actually upgrade your skills. The crews in Starfield will reportedly help you man weapons, perform repairs on the ship, this could explain the repair rate we saw during the gameplay on one of the ship parts, and your crew will actually help you fly your ship. You'll be able to bring these crew members down to planets and assist you in settlements as well as questing. We use procedures drill generation to help us generate the planets themselves, then using artists to touch up certain areas and refine it into a playable zone. Expect a lot of dead areas if you go into unpopulated zones of map and messy non-artist touch areas. And this line or potential leak is actually pretty interesting or funny because this came a full year ago, over a year ago. And now just a couple of weeks out from the official gameplay reveal of Starfield, that is one of the big concerns many people have after seeing that gameplay, that there's going to be a lot of dead space. They mentioned how upon hitting the cloud layer of a planet, you're going to hit a loading screen, then you'll transition to the atmosphere. And this we know is kind of happening. We know that there'll be a transitionary point when you're going from space onto a planet. You can't just fly directly down. But here they actually say that you can fly your ship in the atmosphere, which we never get to see. All we actually see is space flight, but they're claiming here
here, no, you could actually even fly around in the planet's atmosphere in the sky before getting to space. And he also claims rovers will be in Starfield, and we've actually seen some rovers in concept art. This is one of those things that's not really confirmed or disconfirmed one way or another, but with how big these planets can be, being able to fly around or having some more vehicle presence would be really interesting and could make a lot of sense. They describe how Starfield is more akin to older Bethesda games like Morrowind compared to the looter shooter type of gameplay we saw in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. The quest in Starfield won't be as handholdy as Fallout 4 and actually have a lot more of an exploration focus. The gameplay loop will be somewhat familiar, but settlement building and exploration are significantly more in depth in Starfield, including a ship-based settlement system, as well as some kind of settlement takeover system and the ability for settlers to actually build up settlements on their own, which if true would be incredible because that really sounds like Sim Settlements, the very popular Fallout 4 mod, but Starfield edition. And I know there's a lot of people out there, including myself, that would love to see something like Sim Settlements implemented naturally into this game. But he goes on to mention that there will also be both mega cities and mega satellites to explore, it won't just be settlements we have to build up ourselves. They mention how dialogue choices as well as a voiceless protagonist are back, about a week ago Bethesda did confirm the voiceless protagonist is coming back. They claim there are about 9 or so alien races in the game, but almost immediately actually post another reply saying that they are simply guessing that there is 9 intelligent races and they don't know the exact number. This is interesting, we don't really know if there will be intelligent aliens aliens in Starfield. There's a lot of speculation that'll be one of the main points of a quest and a big reveal moment, but based off what we could see thus far, it's not like you can play as an alien in this game, and we haven't seen any intelligent aliens at all in the gameplay. And overall to me, I find this incredibly interesting, and like it has a lot of possibility to be a legitimate leak, almost to the point where it's funny in that there isn't that much leaked here. Most of the things that would be new and announced are those intelligent alien races, the settlement system getting such a big expansion where settlers have a a lot more roles, manning your ship, but then also building up settlements on their own and being able to take over other settlements as a lot of the other stuff that this leaker leaked was actually confirmed by the official gameplay. And to me, it's those little or minor details that make me believe this one. The ladder animation being a thing, the top-down ship editing, and the atmosphere cutscene are just minor things that make me think, oh, maybe there's actually something here. The pretty funny aspect about this all is, I feel like these leaks, the collection of three leaks from the supposed person, haven't really been getting much attention. But something that has been getting a lot of attention is this 4chan leak. This because this did correctly predict a ton of things. It came out in late 2021, but I know for a fact this is a fake leak because I actually know who posted this leak in the first place. So if you saw the post on this leak, no, it's not real. But what the person that created this leak did was actually take some of the details shared by this other leaker that I think may be legit and add it to their post to try and make it seem more plausible. And the reason this leak was created in general was to actually lure out this other supposed leaker. I know this all sounds like a crazy conspiracy, but many of the times this other person was leaking details on Starfield, the one from 2021, 2019, and 2018, they were actually replying to other people's posts. They weren't making their own posts. Only the 2019 post was their own, and they barely talked about Starfield there. So a user that was a big Starfield fan created this fake leak in 2021, hoping that potentially real person would come back and start correcting him, and then in turn reveal a ton of new details. Obviously that didn't work, but it's just kind of funny how now people are looking at this one as a real thing, when no, it is definitely not a real one. So overall with this entire situation, is it real, is it fake, we don't really know. Of course you always have to take leaks with a grain of salt, but to me, there is a shocking amount correct here. Some of this can definitely just be chalked up to, okay, it's a space game, there's a lot of predictions you can make, but a lot of the more minor details, again, to me, are just pretty interesting. Those are things I definitely wouldn't have predicted personally. And we know that things around Starfield have leaked before. We of course have leaked pictures, which are now beyond a doubt real from an earlier build of Starfield, and even leaks from a former dev that were posted on the forum Reset Era that confirmed ship flight in the first place, which of course has now been officially confirmed. Although another interesting note on that Reset Era leak is the dev mentioned how gunplay felt fine, which is definitely one of the most highly criticized aspects of the Starfield gameplay reveal, but the dev said ship flight felt terrible, which I haven't really seen many people criticizing ship flight from the gameplay. Just interesting to observe how somebody who actually played the game feels very differently than the audience having just viewed this gameplay reveal. And one final leak I want to highlight is a bit of a different one, maybe fake or maybe true, but it has some interesting comments 
throughout, and that is the Fandom League. So this technically isn't even really a Starfield League, it is for the Elder Scrolls 6, and it's actually from 2020. The main things actually shared about Starfield are how vehicle mechanics are being developed for Starfield, and that tech will be later used for ships like boats in the Elder Scrolls 6, and how Starfield was apparently coming in 2021, obviously that is very wrong, and in fact later on this leaker, rather oddly, at least to me, admitted how this entire leak was fake. So you might be wondering, why am I looking at a leak where the person literally admitted it wasn't true. Well, some of the DMs I had with this person were pretty interesting to me, where he revealed further details and actually a crude look at an NDA. I don't want to share the picture in case it's legit, but it's one of those situations where the NDA could definitely be fake, but also could not be fake. And this message, which I find interesting even now, several years later. They're doing a blend of the two. There'll be a handful of planets that are created in the traditional Bethesda Game Studio style. At a certain point in the story, you're allowed to explore the frontier, which we an essentially limits number of planets to explore, which is where the galaxy simulation of sorts that I explained earlier will occur. They spent years kneeling down the procedural generation. These planets will still have cities, dungeons, outposts, and even clutter, but it'll be all made by the algorithm using the parameters set by the team. For example, the stuff you'll find on a snowy planet will be well insulated buildings, heavier clothing, clutter like bottles of de-icer, etc. Likewise, on a desert planet, you would be more likely to find solar powered vehicles and ships, moisture evaporators, and underground refrigeration. Those rules on what will appear are not absolute, so you could find snow boots in a house on a desert planet if the person who lives there is an interplanetary trader, for example. I apologize for going on and on. In essence, think of it like four traditional Bethesda Game Studios game worlds, and on top of that, an entire galaxy of procedurally generated worlds, but from the company demos, it is the best procedural generation I've seen in my life. And the four worlds comment, as well as all that procedural generation talk, just is interesting to me. As we know, Starfield will have four major cities. Four worlds, four major cities, a lot of procedural generation, that's what he talks about heavily. It could just be a coincidence, but it just has been one of the leaks to stick with me. I don't really have any evidence of it being true, but it just is a curious one. And again, most of this leak is around the Elder Scrolls 6 anyway, outside of these DMs I received privately. With that though, that is the Starfield leak that I think actually has some decent chances of being true and is definitely a very interesting saga. Hopefully you guys found this one informative, there'll inevitably be other real and potentially fake Starfield leaks coming in the future, and if you want to keep up to date with that, you can get subscribed. With that though, as always again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you all next time. Later.